Now, there are more than 30 million people with disabilities in Nigeria, and uh, they face significant barriers in uh, participating in the country's elections. Now, many of them end up not performing their civic duty because of these barriers. Now, as Nigeria counts down to the 2023 elections, the call for inclusion of persons with disabilities is getting louder. Uh, the provision for Braille ballot ba uh, papers for visually impaired persons, sign language interpreters for those with hearing impairment are some of the demands that PWDs have made to the Independent National Electoral Commission. How can the electoral body ensure that PWDs are not excluded from the process in the next elections uh, coming up in 2023? Joining me to discuss this is the Executive Director of Center for Citizens with Disabilities, David Angeli. Uh, it's good to have you join me this morning. I'm happy and to welcome. be here. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Now, uh, you have been involved in, you know, policies and legislative processes for an advocacy for people with disability. And as we look forward to 2023 election, what are the things, what are the items that uh, you are looking for to for them to change in favor of people with disabilities you know we must thank the national assembly mm. for you know giving us a new electoral act electoral act 2022 mm. and for president muhammad buhari for signing it into law uh, over the years we've been clamoring that certain sections of the electoral act be amended to support people with disability participation mm. Uh, it was crafted previously in such a way that it portrays a charity provision. Charity in the sense that it says, I make me. Mm. So they are other, when they are happy, they provide. If they're not happy, they may not provide. So that, you know, controls the behavior of INEC officials, including their systems, towards people with disability participation. Mm. Uh, so we will we, be clamoring for the recrafting of that section of the literal act and graciously we secured it so now the provision is section 54 of the electoral act 2022 provides that i hmm. shall make provisions for all these so they've been mandated they to carry out that obligation, obligation yeah to provide it hmm. to ensure that there is accessible electoral process for possibilities so for INEC to achieve this means that they need to go back to review or audit their processes mm. to identify where there are gaps. In the past, during obstacle elections, when we conduct a assessment of INEC provisions for persons with disability participation in specific elections, mm. these issues keep on appearing as gaps that need to be covered. During election days, INEC will come up to say, oh, we've done all those things. We have magnifying lens. We have this. Nobody sees it in the field. Nobody interface with it. Nobody gives account to anybody. Uh, so if you, uh, if you procure magnifying glasses, if you have braille materials, and you keep it in your, sh in your store without bringing it to the field, or if you bring it to the field and you train ad hoc staff that are conducting elections for you, at the end of the day, you miss, you know, mainstreaming in your training curriculum some of these, you know, aids that support possibilities participation. Mm. So an ad hoc staff may not even know that there is a magnifying lens. Mm. An ad hoc staff may not even know there is a brain material to support. You wouldn't even know there is a, a poster you know, he's supposed to put, you know, at the pulling unit to help a deaf person to read the process. He doesn't even understand that there are persons with disabilities who are coming to vote. In fact, certain of the pulling unit, the person don't even have a clue. So you know the rush that, you know, comes with election day. So the individual or the individuals managing the election uh, centers will be struggling to make sure that election starts as it ought to. Mm. At the end of the day, these gaps are created. So what we have now is that if we don't see it, we hold ANEC responsible. All right. So, so as we are right now, what engagements are people with disabilities 
beginning to have with INEC regarding that. It is one thing the Electoral Act has been passed, which gives them the authority and the power and the mandate and the obligation to do that. It's another thing to hold a direct and intentional engagement with INEC to say, okay, now that this electoral law has been passed, let us know what uh, way forward on this is going to be. So part of this we are doing mm -hmm. is to sustain our electoral accountability project. Mm -hmm. That is to say, monitor INEC vis-a-vis uh, -vis their response to these provisions. Okay. Recognizing that this assent was secured last month, mm -hmm appreciating that there is a new election of circulation that is coming up you know in Ekiti and on and those states state. or should state mm -hmm. sorry so what it means is that we are going to you know you know organize our tools we are also going to move to these states to look at what is going on already we've part of the issues that were flagged in the past around access and participation in specific to deaf persons is that during election day there are no sign language enough sign language interpreters that can be able to sign for deaf people. Hmm. Part of the recommendations we have made to INEC in the past is that they should mobilize as many sign language interpreters as possible, those that could serve as volunteers, you equally serve as volunteer to support deaf persons at the polling unit. Hmm. So in doing that, we've supported INEC in training uh, sign language interpreters. We've done the pilot in Abuja, mm. that in the uh, five area councils, we've built the capacity of sign language interpreters across these places. And we also built the capacity of close aids of possible deaf persons within the community on civic education. Okay. This is to say that they can do what we call a, a peer training among their peers. So whatever thing they've learned in this uh, meeting, when they go to their peers who are deaf, to their family members, they could equally be able to share it with them. So that during election day, they can come out and participate without fear of any form of barrier. Also, these uh, individuals who are going to be participating as ad hoc, part of the measures is to sustain and encourage INEC to minimize changing of ad hoc staff, you know, few days to election. Mm. Because what, what normally happens is that, a, a classical example in Abuja, a few days to election, a new ad hoc staff who are not maybe properly trained or mm. groomed on elections. With the peculiarities, with the peculiarities of, 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 some of, of where they are going to cover. Exactly. Mm. So when they push them to go and conduct election, most of them may not take steps to observe you know, issues that has to do with access and participation of all. So these are the areas that we are, uh, we are you know, focusing on to ensure that people with disabilities are not left behind during elections. Mm. All right, now, this, this has to do, like you talked about the issue of uh, sign language interpreters, you know, mobilizing them. Now, when we, when we talk about the use of Braille uh, materials, materials that's totally a different because you're talking about logistics you're talking about you know papers and all of that I, is it better to train or how how would it what would it take to train ad hoc staff to begin to understand how to read and interpret uh, ballot papers that are coming in as braille to know what these people are you know what pwds whoever is involved uh, what party he has chosen or candidate he has chosen as the case may be or would it be better to have uh, you know, PWD is employed for that purpose. It's it, it's a mix. Okay. Mixture in the sense that where you don't find where one, you don't you find one, other. you have the other. Okay. Um, the materials are properly labeled hmm. in INEC logistics uh, manuals. Each material has its own number. While building the capacity of trained ad hoc staff, hmm. they also provide you know, some of this material. Sometimes they even explain it to them mm. during training. But where you want to train, let's say, uh, five, 300 ad hoc staff and they're one hall. Mm. <laughs> 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 I 
and you are somewhere <laughs> one corner of the house <laughs> telling them, oh, there's something called this and that. Mm. The other person is not even looking at it, he's yes. not even seeing it. All he's waiting for is for deployment so mm. that he can go and conduct the election and go back home. Mm. Sometimes some of these things, you know, get mixed up. We also provide, like the law, provide that a person with disability can only come with an aid who he trusts, if you're a blind person, mm. that can support you, get to that place and vote. Most times, if when people don't have somebody they trust that can vote for their mm -hmm. own candidate, mm. uh, they also struggle. So they will require to go with the Braille so that they can mm. manage and thumbprint where it is provided in order to be sure that they've Voted yeah, they exercise they the, their own franchise, exactly. their choice for whom they want. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Most times when they get to the polling unit, you see also some of these um, uh, election officials working. Sometimes they try to impose a, an aid mm -hmm. to such individual. Mm -hmm. Most blind persons have complained bitterly that they are dissatisfied with that kind of you know provision. So that is why this Braille material, tactile ballot, as is the case may be, when provided, will you know guarantee that independence mm. on the individual to you know to say yes, I'm voting Mr. A or Party A or Party B, mm. you know. And the issue goes also beyond INEC. Political parties have a role to play. We discover that political parties make minimal you know, provisions for persons with disability participation in what they do. Beyond one, one political party, uh, we, are, we have discovered that most of the political parties mm. have n little or no provision for their uh, members with disabilities to participate. Mm. Where we have political parties that are disability friendly, that has enough provision for people with disabilities, it is their responsibility to go to the field while campaigning, mobilizing for vote, also speak to the language of people with disabilities mm. within the community where they are seeking for vote. So when a political party is not accessible to a person with disability or not inclusive of people with disabilities, the possibility of passing these messages to the news and cranes of uh, you know communities mm. where they are seeking for vote mm. becomes difficult. In, because basically, the people who are supposed to go to tell people how to vote, who yeah. to vote, and the political parties. Exactly. I, I don't even understand. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But these are where we are having also serious challenges. Now, the, the talk to us about the issue of data, available data of persons with uh, this, this special needs. Because if we're talking about sign language interpreters, uh, when it comes to the distribution of those based on polling units, based on, you know, districts and all of that, how much, because there are places you might get to that you might not have any uh, 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 blind person exactly. or anybody who needs uh, the Braille uh, service. Mm. So h how do we handle that kind of spread where we don't have reliable and dependable data of the spread of these people? So INEC, in their continual voter registration, mm made provision for data disaggregation mm. by disability. Mm. So if you're a person with disability and you want to go for, you know, a registration, mm. you need to disclose your disability there okay. so that INEC will track it. If you're a person with disability now and you are uh, not sure of your dis whether your card, you know, has disability related mm. uh, component. You can equally go if you are transferring your location to another uh, polling unit. As you are transferring, you indicate you have disability. By so doing, INEC has created a mechanism to mobile up data mm. around people with disabilities for different locations. The question now is are people willing to disclose their disability? Okay. That is the issue. Because most times, People are afraid of disclosing their disability because of known fears, stigma, discrimination, and other, you know, attitudinal experiences that are negative people with disabilities receive within the community. Mm. Also, um, um, officials that are, you know, gathering this data, are they able to explain or ask questions on these individuals whether they have disability? I was in a, an event in Abuja and we are discussing issues of participation of marginalized population mm. and data. Then I asked participants here, how many of you here disclose their disability status? I happen to be the only one 
that mm. disclose his disability status. But I ask them, out of the people that are here, all the people that are wearing spectacle, remove your spectacle, will you see? They say they cannot see. But mm. why don't you disclose that you have disability? Exactly. And the professor who was there was like, oh, I didn't even know that I'm part of the community. <laughs> I don't even understand. I said, because if you remove your spectacle, you will not see again. Exactly. You can't even read what you are reading. And you are asked to disclose your disability, and you refuse to disclose it. Because of this mindset within our people mm. that disability is just when you are blind, totally blind, yeah, you cannot exactly. see again. No. The moment so, you so have... So it means there has to be more awareness in this regard. Exactly. For people to know what what where you fall into yeah. Yeah, and, and i think that you you mentioned the issue of stigma sometimes people just feel that okay uh i i am not carrying a, a crutches or mm. i am not on the wheelchair so mm. i don't belong in there and, mm. and all of that but, the, but that's not the issue it's mm. just the issue do you need any assistance exactly any form of assistance do you need any form of assistance so that we know how to assist you mm. that is what this thing is all about it's all about so because you know we've not created a kind of awareness yeah. Right. around disability hmm. so people continue to perceive disability as negative i know how nigeria behave the day they discover there is an incentive of being a person with disabilities <laughs> they'll be <laughs> 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 They'll be rushed. <laughs> Maybe that is where government will come from. <laughs> <laughs> They'll be rushed. And then we'll see people you say, see, you I see have three cousins. No, you will see all manner of disability. <laughs> Both known and unknown. Exactly. <laughs> the one we know, the one we don't know. <laughs> no, no. It's all right. So let's talk about the issue of awareness creation in the area of uh, voter enlightenment and, and getting PVCs. Or, or You mentioned earlier that uh, political parties have a very big role to play. But if the political parties are not coming forth enough, we all have responsibility on our own to ensure that our people, you know, go out there one way or the other. You have been in the forefront of this advocacy. What, what is happening in that regard, ensuring that PWDs get their PVCs and they are ready to, you know, shoot out on the day of election? So, private organizations, mm. you know, civil society groups, every day are using, you know, both offline and online you know platforms to create awareness on the need for person with disabilities mm -hmm. to go out to register to participate in mm -hmm. the election mm -hmm. to know the benefit of participating in the election mm -hmm. in fact many persons with disabilities are indicating interest to contest amazing i receive calls from different parts of nigeria there is this particular word that always coming from taraba mm -hmm. he's the only one contesting for house of assembly in anyone with disability contesting for house of assembly in his state amazing and he's willing in different states many people with disabilities are jumping up because they feel that they can be able to go in to support the state mm. in designing the or creating the kind of future all of us design mm. i always tell people we can't continue to be outside the fence you know shouting advocating mm. you know speaking to who and the other person but if you're in the policy seat mm. if you are part of the policy makers it will be easier much much easier for you to be able to guide, to you know, tell the, the state or lead the state on what is expected of them in order to ensure inclusive, you know, uh, electoral process or participant of in right. elections. All right, uh, it's really been an enlightened uh, uh, discussion with you on this, David Agnelli. Thank you so much for coming on the program. I'm so happy. And to thank be here. you for what you do at uh, the Center for Citizens with Disabilities. It's really amazing. Thank you so thank much. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Great. very grateful. All right.